All right, welcome back. Welcome back to today's broadcast, Recharge Service. Uh, the Recharge Service is the Bible study service of the House of Light Assembly here in Akron, Ohio. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us. Let's get into the Word of God very quickly. And let's bow our heads to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. I will bless your name this evening. Thank you, Father. For another opportunity for us to gather in your presence. The Bible says in your presence is fullness of joy. And at the right hand there are pleasures forevermore. We ask and pray that you will fill us with joy. And your pleasures from your word will locate us this evening. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare and declare that the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he anointed me to open the eyes of the blind. To turn me from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God. That they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them that are sanctified by faith that is in me. And as the power, as this word of God goes forth, the power of God goes with it to bring these declarations to pass. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen and amen. Welcome again to today's Bible study. Uh, we want to continue from where we stopped last week Sunday. Uh, last week Wednesday, I'm sorry. Uh, we started a series of teachings on peacemakers. Peacemakers. And our anchor scripture remains Matthew chapter 5 verse 9. The Bible says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. And we extract that scripture with the help of the Holy Spirit to know that that first line is both a calling and a purpose. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called the sons of God. We talked about the fact that Jesus was teaching the basics and fundamentals of Christianity in that Matthew chapter 5. And so we divided the lesson outline into three parts. Okay, we we're able to treat the first two last week, and this week we're going today we're going to treat the third part. The first outline is the fact that we are called to live in peace, you know. We divided the outline to mean that our purpose is to live in peace. We are called by God to live in peace. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14, the Bible says, Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. And if God says follow peace with all men, it means it is possible to live in peace. Excuse me, with all men. Praise the Lord. So, we are called to live in peace. And we talked about how to live in peace. We mentioned four powerful points on how to live in peace. Uh, please go get the teaching from last week's on uh, Wednesday if you don't have that or if you haven't watched it. It's on our YouTube webpage. Uh, so please go watch that very quickly. You will be blessed by that. We also talked about the second assignment for us is the fact that we are called to be peacemakers. Okay, we are called to live in peace. And we're called by God to be peacemakers. We talked about our primary purpose is to reconcile men back to God. Okay, to settle the dispute that any man may have against God. To make men see that God is not the source of any problems they may be encountering or any issues they may have had. To let them know there's no reason to be offended in God. Okay. So we are called to be peacemakers, and we are called to live in peace. Part of being of peace, being a peacemaker also entails the fact that we need to live in peace and be able to make peace amongst ourselves, to settle disputes amongst each other as brethren. Okay, we said that conflict will arise. You know, we are holy people, we are sanctified people, we are sensible people, we are professionals. But we will still have conflicts. In Acts chapter 6, we saw the story of a conflict there in verse 1 and 3. From verse 1 to 3, how the people uh, were upset that their widows were not considered in the administration. Okay, so there was a conflict there. The apostles went about resolving it with wisdom. Okay, because we are peacemakers. We are called to be peacemakers. Okay, the Bible also said that we should go to the wise ones amongst us to settle disputes. 
mm, not to be able to broadcast our issues outside. First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 1 to 5. Amen. So today we want to wrap this series up by going to the last part. And this last part is very, very profound. You see, I can tell you your purpose. I can tell you your calling as a peacemaker. But if I don't tell you this, then that gospel is not balanced. If I don't tell you what I'm about to tell you now, or if I never mention it to you, or if you're if you not aware of it, then that message is not balanced. And what am I telling you this evening? Or what do I want to tell you about? I want to tell you this, that we shall give an account of both our calling and our purpose. We shall give an account of how we lived in peace and we shall give an account of how we have lived in peace or we have, we have, we have, we have settled disputes. We had settled situations that brought peace in the life of the brethren, in the body of Christ, or even amongst each other. So we shall all give an account, is where I want to emphasize on today, the accountability part of it. You see, we talked about the difference between purpose and calling. And we said that purpose is who you are, and calling is what you are sent to do. Okay, so we will give an account of this too. I want to start reading today. I want to. I want to. I want to. I want to uh, have an expose on this this evening. First, by making us read, you know, showing us from Matthew chapter twenty-five, verse fourteen to thirty. Hallelujah. Matthew twenty-five, from verse fourteen to thirty. We will not read the whole scripture, but this is going to be the anchor scripture for this third part of the teaching. There is an account to be given. Matthew chapter 25 from verse 14 to 30 is the parable of the talents. The parable of the talents. The Bible says, For the kingdom of God is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servant and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straight away took his journey. And that, and he that had received the five talents went, and traded the same, and made them other five talents, and likewise he that received two, he also gained other two. But he that received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. Fast forward to... Well, let's continue. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with him. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done. Thou good and faithful servant, thou hast been faithful over a, over a few things. I will make thee a ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Anyway, the second person also came and said the same thing. And the Lord of the master, of the servant, said the same thing. And verse 24, let's jump to verse 24 very quickly. Then he which had received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast, that is thine. And his Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knowest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to exchangers, then at my coming, I should have received my own with usury. Some translation says, with interest. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which had ten talents. Verse 29 and 30, where we're going. Hallelujah. Verse 29. The Bible says, For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. 
But from him that has not shall be taken away even that which he had. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. They shall be weeping and they shall be gnashing of teeth. Praise the Lord. In this story we see a, a, a man who decided to test his servants. You see many people sometimes wonder why the lord of the house decided to not give them equal talent. Well, the Bible explained it, that he gave them those talents according to their several abilities. What does that mean? It means that the lord of the house knew each and every one of them and knew their capacity to reproduce or to gain from the interest that he gave them. The Lord of the house knew their behavior. Okay, He knew their, their sense of accountability. He knew their sense of ownership. Okay, He knew these guys very well. So he knew that the guy he gave one talent was the least trustworthy of them all. But still he needed to pass a message across to the first talent, to get the first talent. And also to reward all three of them. Believe me. Before this example, the, master, the Lord of the house would have tested them before for him to have given them talent according to their several abilities. So he must have observed their several abilities. So this was not the first time the guy with the one talent was doing this. The Lord of the house knew so well that this guy is not taking this accountability and this ownership very seriously. I cannot give him five talents. I can't even give him two. I need to give him one. And lo and behold, the guy with the one talent did not mess up. <laughs> he, 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 he didn't prove them wrong. He didn't prove the Lord of the house wrong. He did it just as they thought he would. He kept his one talent. And not only did he keep his one talent, when the time for accountability came, he tried to play the blame game and tried to blame the Lord of his house. Hmm? But that was something that was quite unfortunate. But anyway, how does this relate to what we're talking about as peacemakers? You see, the Lord God heaven of heaven knows each and every one of us. He knows our temperament. He knows our behaviors our 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 thought pattern our thought process and so he has given every one of us abilities to be peacemakers at different levels at different stages at dif with with different tolerance to be peacemakers in different scenarios to some he gave opportunities more than others because he knows your temperament he made you and I he knows our temperament. He knows what he can trust us with. But the good news is that he trusts all of us. All of the servants of the Lord each got a talent. That's a point there too. Even though they weren't equal, but at least everyone did receive something. So the Lord God of my Almighty has given us a talent each. But there will be accountability for us. We will all be held accountable of the problems we solved while we were on earth or the problems we created while we are on earth. If you are not part of the solution, then you are the problem. You are part of the problem. Okay? So there is accountability coming from God to us to check if we used and maximized our time here on earth effectively as a peacemaker or as one that settles peace, that makes peace, okay, or one that lives in peace with others, okay? So I want to break this down into three, into three points. The truth of the matter is that there is a certain day coming where we'll be held accountable. I want to remind you and I that, look, there is a cut-off day where every man's work will be judged. There is a cut of time where every man's works will stop at the same time for the judge of the earth to judge. 
Revelation chapter 22 verse 12. Revelation chapter 22 verse 12 says it all. It says, I come. Let's read verbatim so I don't I don't miss any part of that. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 12. Hallelujah. It says, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I come quickly. There is a certain day that is coming. There is a certain day that is coming quickly where God, the judge of the heaven and the earth, will judge you and I by how many problems we solved. Whether with our one talent or with our two talents or with our five talents. You know, to whom what the Bible says, to, to whom much is given, much is expected. If the man with the five talents had gone and made two more, he wouldn't get the same appraisal he got. If the man with two talents came with only one in return, the same thing would not happen. The Lord of the house gave them five talents, gave him five talents, knowing fully well that he's supposed to bring five more. So we will give an account of the problems we solved on earth. We will give an account of the problems we overlooked. There is violence in the town, there is hunger, there is there's war, there's famine, there's sickness. If you and I don't step in as peacemakers, we will be held accountable someday. Hmm? We are, it's our calling. You, you don't have to wait till it affects you directly. We need to make the peace that is required. You know, I was listening to a man of God this evening and he was talking about being of financial benefits to others. And he said, anytime you see somebody and you see their potential and their reality and you see that there is a gap between their potentials and their reality, and God shows you, God has given you all it takes to bridge that gap. God has given you all it takes to mend and to connect those two dots. So we cannot fold our hands and sit down. We cannot fold our hands and look. We cannot fold our hands and say nothing. The day is coming where God will ask, I was hungry, you did not give me food. I was thirsty, you did not give me drink. Naked was I, you did not give me clothes. That day is coming where God will ask us, you knew this person was going through this challenge, you did not help out. You knew this couple or this marriage was crashing and you didn't say anything. You know this person was on their way, or was on the highway to hell, but you never said anything. Oh, you know this person's business was going down the drain and you had all it takes to help, but you never did anything. That day is coming. And the Bible says that day is coming quickly. Oh, it's coming faster than we know it. It's coming faster than you can go and prepare for. You need to be already prepared. We need to be already prepared. That day is coming where there will be judgment. That day is coming where God, who is the judge of the earth, will judge. The one that has given every one of us an opportunity. The one who has given every one of us a talent, a grace, a gift. Will judge. Will judge. Genesis chapter 18 verse 25. Abraham called God the judge of the earth. He will be the judge of everyone on earth. With all the opportunities we had. To be peacemakers, to draw men to God. But we didn't do anything. The opportunities we had to settle disputes in the body of Christ. And we said nothing. You know, for those who are just joining us on this broadcast, earlier I mentioned how unfortunate it is that a young man by the name George Floyd was murdered recently. We cannot afford to sit back and look. That is part of the peace we're supposed to mend. That is part of the peace we're supposed to create. That is part of the peace that we're supposed to contribute to. 
in one way or shape or form. Because the day is coming. The God of heaven and earth, who is not partial, will come and judge. Now let me bring this home a little bit. Some of you may be wondering, what is my talent? What is my one talent? What is my two talents? What is my five talents? Let me bring that home a little bit. Your first talent is your personality. Every one of us has a personality. Every one of us has a way we approach things or we approach people. Some are quiet, some are vocal, some are gentle, some are quiet and then become vocal, some become vocal and then become quiet. The first thing that we have as an asset is our personalities. How some can speak gently and resolve issues. How some can speak like Apostle Paul and still win arguments. That's an asset. Don't take that for granted. To somebody, you think that doesn't mean anything. You know, when I was growing up, I would never forget this story. My mom is on the quiet side, very gentle and peaceful woman. I think she got that from her mother, my grandmother. There was a couple in church that was going through marital crisis. I was little, but I paid attention. I know and I heard the whole story. And in the midst of this chaos, pastors came, the brethren came, everybody came, talked to the man, talked to the wife. They wouldn't agree. There wasn't a solution. There wasn't a resolution. Nothing was working. In fact, maybe it, it got worse. I don't know. Maybe it even got worse. I don't know. But one day, my mom said that she called the man. And she told the man, please, let peace reign. Please, let peace reign. Please, please, let peace reign. And my mom said, the man wanted to react in the normal way he had reacted to other people. But... Something about that gentle, peaceful voice. Something about that gentle, peaceful voice reached out to the man. It cut the man. It, it restricted the man from acting the way or from reacting the way he has been reacting. And the man said, it's because you are saying this that I'm going to listen. It's because you are saying this that I'm going to listen. Anyway, the long and short of the story is the, the marriage got better. What did my mom say that was different from what everybody else said? What was special about that statement? What was unique about it? Nothing. But the approach based on the personality of the person that delivered it was what God used to make the difference. Never take your personality for granted. You know, where people who, who, who can speak, who, who have the gift of oratory, who can speak fast, who can speak loud, who can speak with, with boldness and assertion, when they can speak and if it doesn't make a difference, don't undermine your own ability as a gentle person. Don't undermine your own personality as a quiet person. It can make the difference in causing or creating peace or finding solution to a matter. Don't look down on that. Your asset, your personality is an asset. God created you that way for his own purpose. There's nothing wrong with being quiet and there's nothing wrong with being, with being vocal. God made us all that way. Don't look down on your personality. Huh? The other day I tried to mention the four personality types and I'm not going to all of that now. I, I'm sure you get the message. Hmm? The choleric, the melancholy, you know, all the four personalities. The phlegmatic, all the, the four, all four of them. God created us all for a reason. So use your personality to approach people that are tough. You know what's interesting? Sometimes some people are tough on the outside but soft on the inside. So if God gives you the grace to come their way, approach them with your personality just the way you are. 
Don't pretend to be quiet if you're not quiet. Don't pretend to be gentle if you're not gentle. And don't try to speak loud if you're a quiet person. Don't try to go out of your comfort zone. Just be real. Just be, be, be real and approach the situation with your self, with, 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 your, with your true self. Let me put it that way. Amen. The second thing that God has given to us are opportunities. Opportunities. The opportunities you have to be a peacemaker is not the same opportunity that I have. For example, I'm bilingual. I can speak my native dialect, which is the Yoruba language. Some people are not. So, I can go to a Yoruba speaking nation or a Yoruba speaking group of people and be able to talk to them and they will listen. Just like we saw in Acts chapter 21 and Acts chapter 22 when Paul spoke Grecian. But you may not have that same grace. The opportunity that I have to be bilingual, trust me, I didn't do anything to earn it. I was just fortunate to be born there and I learned that growing up. But that's an opportunity. And God gave me that opportunity because he knows that I'm called. We are called to be peacemakers. So God has given to us opportunities at different levels. Some have access to people in government, to people in politics. You know, a gentleman flew to North Korea on his own will and met with the president of North Korea and wanted to make peace with North Korea and the United States. That's an opportunity that he has access to that person. Don't take that for granted. The opportunities of working where you work right now, the opportunity of living where you live right now, the opportunity of having that business that you have right now, that is an asset. That is an asset. That is an asset. That is a talent that God has given to you. That's a talent that God has given to me. So let's take advantage of that. The third thing is the influence that we have. Now, influence and opportunities are similar, but they are unique. As a father, I have influence over my child. As a mother, as a spiritual father, I have spiritual influence over the people that God has given me leadership over. As a mother, you have influence. You know, as a business owner, you have influence. As an employer of labor, you have influence. We will give an account of this influence someday. What have we done to humanity to help humanity with our influence? We will give an account someday. We will give an account someday. Number three, number four. Money. Our financial resources. We will give an account of every dime and how we use that to fulfill our calling and our purpose as peacemakers. Let me tell you the secret of money. Money flows to those who knows the purpose for which they have it. Money is provision. So money is for people with vision who know why they have it. Who know what they are supposed to do with it. And the smartest thing to do with money is to use it for the king, advancement of the kingdom of God. To propagate the gospel. To reach out to the lost. Bring them to Christ. Bring them to church. Disciple them. Make disciples of them. Our money, our financial resources. And it's an unending cycle. The more you do that, the more money flows into your hands. And the loop goes on and on. We will give an account. We will give an account. We will give an account. The gospel is not free. Jesus paid the price. And there's still a financial price we have to pay to propagate the gospel. The resources that we have, I'm doing this service this evening remotely. 
The internet bills is there to be paid. The, 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 the gadgets, you know, even those that are even doing it on a bigger scale, it's even bigger cost for them. So your resources, my resources need to go towards those things. Praise God. I was reading the uh, annual bulletin of a ministry that I, I, I connect to. And this, they said they had given a tithe of $10 million. A tithe of $10 million to other ministries who are propagating the gospel. Why will they not be blessed? By the way, they never started from $10 million. They started on a smaller scale. But because they knew what the essence of the little they have, what it was for, God blessed them much more. God bless them with more. So your financial resources, the $5 in your pocket, the $1 in your account, or the $20 million you are getting from, from, from your business, every single dime will be made, will be, will, 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 will be given a test of accountability. A test of accountability. Behold, I come quickly. My reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. According as his work shall be. You will be rewarded according to your work, both your personality, both your opportunities, both the influences you have, and the financial resources, the financial resources that comes your way. Another point of accountability is the gifts and the talents that you have. I'm going, to, I'm going to talk about the physical gifts and then I'll talk about the spiritual gifts that you have. All of these things got packaged in you. And I'm sure now you see that you have more than you thought you had to be a peacemaker on earth. You and I are an embodiment of talent, of grace, of gifts for the singular purpose of being a peacemaker. For the singular purpose of peace, being a peacemaker. Romans chapter 14 verse 12. It says, So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Every one of us shall give an account of himself unto God. God will ask us how we use our talent. How we use the gifts that he gave us. How we use that to be a peacemaker. To draw men back to God. To settle dispute among humanity. How did we use that? In 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 7 to 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 7 to 11. We see the Bible talk about spiritual gifts there. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Chapter 12 verse 7 to 11. We see that the Bible says. That, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit without. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same, by the same Spirit, to another the gift of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another descending of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another, the interpretation of tongues. He said, But all this worketh one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Look at all those graces and all those gifts mentioned there. All of those things are for us to be peacemakers. All those things, all those gifts, all those talents, all those anointings is for us to be peacemakers. It's for us to be peacemakers. It's for us to settle disputes. It's for us to draw men to God, to settle the dispute between man and God. You need the gift of wisdom. Hmm? You need the word of knowledge. Oh, yeah. You need the word of knowledge. Oh, you need the spirit of faith. Oh, yeah, you do. You need the gift of healing. Because the Bible even says that if they don't see miracles, they will not believe. So a gift of healing of miracles can go a long way 
in preaching the gospel of Jesus to many. All those gifts that you have, it's not for you to shine your light in the eye of another believer. It is to shine your light to the world. That they, while they are seeing your good works, they will glorify your Father in heaven. They will say, surely this is not something that came from man. This is the gift and the grace of God. Look at how the Bible puts it in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 12. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 12. After he mentioned all the gifts, he said he gave some apostles and prophets and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ for the perfecting of the saints to make peace with men for the work of the ministry of reconciliation after the order of uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 18 for the edification of the body of Christ we will give an account of all those gifts and all those talents of all those gifts and all those talents all the graces now talking about physical talents too we give an account God gave us talent according to our several abilities we will give an account the day is coming and the day is coming quickly the day is coming that day is coming quickly everything that God gives to us is to make us peacemakers reconciling men back to God settling disputes living at peace with all men and if we don't do that we will give an account before God the good shepherd who will judge us and give us our rewards according to our works according to our works according to our works according to our labor everything we do on earth let's remember don't forget your ministry your ministry is not singing singing is singing singing is a tool of the ministry your ministry is not preaching preaching is the tool your ministry is not clapping or dancing dancing is the tool is the vehicle the ministry is what you do that impacts humans directly towards God that brings them to Christ amen who we'll give an account so those who can sing sing and minister life prophesy to them those who can preach preach the gospel those who can dance dance those who can mime or rap do what you can with your talent reconciling men to God reconciling men to God there is always a fish in the there's always a coin in the mouth of every fish there's always a coin in the mouth of every fish so anyone you come in contact with there is something God wants you to deposit there's something God wants to bring out the goodness God wants to bring out out of that person so use your talent use your gifts use the influences use the opportunities use the money use the your personality to be a peacemaker to god i bring you this message in a solemn way so you can have good time to think about these things because it's real this word you are hearing now god is going to judge us about it that on the 27th of may 2020 you received a word that i'm coming why didn't you prepare for my coming why didn't you turn around why didn't you why didn't you make do something different the time is coming i pray that we will be ready i pray that every one of us will be prepared and available to give full account of our stewardship and the grace that god has given to us in the name of jesus Let's bow our heads. Thank God for his word that he has sent to us this evening. Let's give him all the praise and glory. Father, we bless your name this evening. Thank you for sending your word to us. Thank you for the power in your word. We give you all the praise. We give you all honor and adoration. Blessed be the name, Father. 
Thank you for your word. Let's go ahead and receive grace to amend our ways, to reconcile men to God, to invest in, king, in the kingdom of God with our talent, our resources, with our energy, with our influence and opportunities, and even with our personalities, to be kingdom influencers. Let's receive the grace this evening in the name of Jesus. Father, we receive the grace. We receive the grace to win souls for you, for your kingdom, to reconcile men back to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we've prayed. And all of God's people shout aloud, Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, there's a category of people today that want to return back to God. Maybe you are under the influence of my voice and you know that you are you don't belong to God. You know within yourself you have not made Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life. Would you come home today? Would you come back today? Would you come back to the love of your life? He's been waiting for you all this while. And he's ready to take you now. Or perhaps you're under the sound of my voice. Once upon a time you were with Christ. Maybe you were even doing what I'm doing now. You were preaching the gospel. But something happened and you, you lost it all. I was just reading the sad story of a young man today. Who was a, a guitarist of a band. A famous band. Who said he no longer believes in God. Things unfortunately are happening like this. And if you are in that one category. I want you to know that Jesus loves you. I want you to know that Jesus cares for you. I want you to know that Jesus wants you back home. Like that prodigal son. Once he sees you coming from afar. He's going to run towards you. And give you a big hug. And change your garment. And make a feast for you. He's got good plans for you. He's not mad at you. He wants you back home. If you're in any of these two categories, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. If you want Jesus to come into your heart, or if you want to receive him again, you want to return back home, please bow your heads and say these prayers after me. Say with me, Lord Jesus, I come to you today as a sinner, and I know that you are the Savior. Please forgive me for my sins. And write my name in the book of life. And make me your child again. I believe. And I confess with my mouth. That Jesus. Is Lord. And that he died. And rose again. And on the third day. He rose again, that I may be justified. Right now I believe, I'm forgiven, I'm saved, I'm born again, I'm a child of God. I am free from the power of sin to serve the living God. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Let me pray with you, Father. I thank you for this ones that you have brought back to yourself. I pray that the same grace that has brought them forward will preserve them. They will not go back to the world. They will not go back to the vomit. The sin and the curse of this world will not take them away from you. In the name of Jesus, I cover them with the precious blood of Jesus. They will grow and go from glory to glory. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. Amen. If you said that prayer, I want to hear from you. So please send us your report. Send me a message at pastoratola.org or info at tola, T -H -O -L -A dot org or tola633 at gmail.com. Tola633 at gmail.com. I want to hear from you. I want to keep on praying with you and help you. Stay in Christ. I want to be your accountability partner. So please write to me. Let me know you made the decision. You said that prayer. And I'll be happy to pray to continue working with you. As the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Alright. 
Today is the fifth Wednesday of the seven Wednesdays the Lord asked me to pray for those with coronavirus. Again, this is not a feeling. This is an instruction from heaven that I am bound to follow. It. And today I'm going to be praying for everyone or anyone under the siege of coronavirus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Today I'm going to be praying for us. So if you have any picture of anyone with coronavirus, please bring it forward. Amen. If it's you that are watching this broadcast now and you have any symptoms of coronavirus in your body, no problem. Just look at me. As I pray, just put your eyes on the screen. The power of God will hit you and locate you where you are. And you will be instantly healed. You will be instantly delivered. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to be praying for you from James chapter 5 verse 14. The Bible says, is any sick, let's read from verse 13. Is there, is there, is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Pay attention to verse 13. Pay attention to verse 14 and verse 15. And see the power of prayer there. It says, Is there any among you afflicted with coronavirus? Let him pray. Okay? And is anyone sick among you? Let him call on the elders of the church and let them pray over him. <laughs> and thirdly, and the prayer of faith shall heal the sick. So the prayer we're about to pray now is the prayer of faith. And as I pray for you, that symptom of coronavirus in your body will be dead for life. In the name of Jesus. Are you ready? Bow your heads and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you because you always hear me. Lord, according to your instruction, I pray for anyone and everyone under the sound of my voice who may be sick or inflicted, afflicted with the plague of coronavirus. I command that disease to leave your body now in the name of Jesus Christ. I command coronavirus to get out of your body in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, if he shall speak to this mountain and command it to move into the sea, and shall not doubt into your heart, he said, he shall move into the sea. I command today that spirit of coronavirus out of your body in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command the mountain of coronavirus to move in the name of Jesus. I command healing in your body. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are healed, you are set free, you are delivered. This prayer of faith is healing you now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I state the name of Jesus against every form of sickness, against every form of disease, against coronavirus in particular in your body. In the name of Jesus, I command that sickness to get out now. You are free, you are set free, you are delivered. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so shall it be. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen and amen. We have spoke, I have spoken to the mountain of coronavirus. And it has been cast into the sea. The bottomless sea. So go and get your second testing tomorrow. You are healed already. If it's afternoon, you are watching this, go and get tested as soon as you can. And the God of heaven has healed you already. In Jesus' name. If you stood for someone, stood in the gap for somebody, call them. Let them go take the test again. Coronavirus is gone. In Jesus' mighty name. 
Amen and amen. Praise God. Praise God. All right. Let me give an opportunity for us to worship the Lord with our substance this evening. If you have brought something for the Lord, to worship the Lord, the Bible says, let's stop, that we should not come into the house of the Lord empty-handed. So anything and everything you have brought to worship the Lord this evening, please package them. If you are writing a check, write it to the House of Light Assembly. Uh, send me a message, a private message, and I will let you know the address to send it to, and we can cash it. If you want to send wirelessly, please, you can use Zelly at uh, tola633 at gmail.com. T-H-O-L-A 633 at gmail.com. Praise God. You can go on our website also at tola.org and look at the other giving ways, uh, the ways of giving that is on there. T-H-O-L-A dot org. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you and your offering. The Lord bless us and bless our offerings. The Lord accept us and accept our offerings. May our offerings speak for us in the days of trouble. May this seed planted in this ground grow into a, a, a garden and a vineyard of life. In the name of Jesus Christ, so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. God bless you. All right. As we go tonight, the Lord God will be with us and guide us. He will give his angels charge over us. They will bear us up in our hands. We will not dash our foot against the stone. Our going out and going out and coming in is blessed. We shall sleep and wake up safely. The Lord shall give us rest. In Jesus' mighty name. Please join us again on Sunday at 10 a.m. as we go into our Pentecost service. Okay? It's the last Sunday of the month and it's the 50th, well, technically the 49th day past resurrection, past Easter. Uh, the 50th is Sunday, but we celebrate the Pentecost on Sunday, the 31st of May. Please join us. We're in our Pentecost service the 31st of May this year. Time is 10 a.m. It's going to be right here on Instagram. The Lord bless you and keep you. May He cause His countenance to shine upon you. And may He grant you peace. In Jesus' mighty name. Once again, my name is Pastor D. The lead pastor here at the House of Light Assembly. Let's share the grace and fellowship. With the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now forevermore. Amen. And surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us. All the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Peace. God bless you. If you are in the Akron area, please reach out to us. We would like to connect with you. The Lord keep you. Have a good night. And remember that Jesus is Lord. Have a good night. <laughs>